my intention was to rebuild the periodic table, you know, build a new periodic table. Hey, this sounds pretty interesting. I've got a PhD in chemistry, so let me give you some commentary on what's being said here. And when you say rebuild the periodic table, what do you mean specifically? You'll see hydrogen sitting all the way over there by itself, but they don't show that hydrogen has the same tone as, as carbon. And what do you mean by tone? Same tone, same key of E. Same key of E. 40.5 hertz, the next one would be like um, 81 hertz. It sounds like he's using the term tone here to be synonymous with frequency. Frequency is measured in hertz, and that's just how many times a wave fluctuates back and forth every second. Or the tones that they create, you know, their color. It is true that when the elements gain energy, they give off that energy as light. And the color or frequency of light given off is characteristic of the element. For example, the element lithium gives off a beautiful scarlet light. The frequency of this light is 447 trillion hertz. On the other hand, sodium gives off orange-yellow light and its frequency is 509 trillion hertz. You can turn color back into sound based upon it's the same wavelength, it's just twice as long. And you'll ultimately get back to the audible sound of it because there was a relationship between light and color, sound and tone, matter and shape. It seems like what's being suggested here is that the colors of light given off by the elements can somehow get turned into sound. Now, if what's being claimed here is that light waves can get turned into sound waves, yeah, there's a real problem with that. The two types of waves are just so different. Think about it. Light waves travel hundreds of thousands of miles in a second. Sound waves, they take like five seconds to go just one mile. It's also true that light waves don't need a medium to travel through. I mean, they can go through the vacuum of space. Sound waves, on the other hand, they need molecules, a medium to travel through. So all you have to do is keep dividing light by two. The lithium becomes sodium in the next octave, doubles the same exact tone, just doubled and, and wider. The sodium becomes potassium in the next octave, widens up. Okay, this is awesome. This claim can actually be tested. We can very easily look up the frequencies of light that are responsible for the colors of these three elements. Here's the pertinent information for lithium, sodium, and potassium. The frequencies with the highest intensities are those responsible for the color of the element. Here's all the pertinent information in a bit more condensed form so it's easier to see. Now the claim was that doubling lithium's frequency should give you sodium's frequency. But lithium's frequency doubled, that's 894 terahertz, which is way off the frequency for sodium. And doubling sodium's frequency gives you 1018, and that doesn't match either frequency for potassium. You know, overall, I have to say the chemistry discussed in this video was way out there. I think a lot of this stems from the fact that terms were poorly defined at best, and sometimes not even at all. You know, there's a lot more chemistry discussed in the interview, and there's any of those parts you'd like me to touch upon, drop me a line in the comments and maybe I'll get around to it. You can also let me know what you thought of Joe Rogan's interview and my analysis of it. Thanks a bunch for watching.